Welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm Brandilyn Daly, and this is Courtney Patterson. She has written a program for calibrating and projecting our patterns, similar to the one that I've talked about before. This one is called Pattern Projector, and it is a web-based program. So it's a little bit different in the way that it works and who it's available to. And I am so excited to be talking with her and bringing this new option to you guys. Hi, Courtney. Hi. Okay, so Courtney, before we get into the program, I want to know a little bit about you. So first of all, did I say your name right? Yes. yes. Okay. And um, I forgot to ask that earlier. And then what what is what do you do um, in the real world? How did you know how to write a, a program? So I've been a stay-at-home mom for the past six years, but previous to that, I got a degree in computing. Um, so I've just been tinkering with little projects over the past six years while trying to take care of the kids. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's awesome. Okay. So this is your degree, but you don't have a lot of the, the work experience behind it. Um, exactly. But this is actually really good experience solving this real world problem with a computer program, which again, just blows my mind. Okay. So how did you get connected with projector sewing specifically? You, well, actually, let me back up. How did you get started sewing? Um, so I've been sewing since I was young because my mom and my grandma sew a lot. Um, but I only took the plunge into projector sewing really after making this app. Um, I heard about it because I had purchased an indie pattern a couple of years ago and saw that there was a projector file and thought, oh, what is this? Uh, and then I found this group and then I was like, oh, maybe I can do something here. Uh, so it sort of stemmed from that. What is pattern projector? Like a super basic, how does it work explanation? Um, so it's a tool for making sure that when you project a pattern, it is the right scale and the right shape, basically. Um, so naively, when I first started, so the reason why we got our projector in the first place was to do a mural on the wall. And so... Is it what's behind you? Yes, it is. It's beautiful. <laughs> I thought it was a wallpaper. That's so cool. <laughs> So we set it up and then started painting. And then, of course, we had to move the projector and then went to put it back. And we thought, oh, well, we'll just try and match it up again. And you can imagine that was an absolute nightmare. I can't um, imagine that, yes. Yes. Oh, so, yes. Um, not really possible. Eventually, it became possible. But um, yeah, so I knew that this was an issue. But um then my so my husband is the one who had the idea to he started messing around with some software using a, a library it's called open computer vision um, for trying to figure out how we could finish our mural uh, realistically without having to just paint over the whole thing so he found a tool for um, basically mapping so you have uh, a rectangle so you would say i want the shape that I'm seeing right now to look like this rectangle and you give that to the program and then it will tell you here's how you need to transform it to make it actually look like a rectangle instead of the weird shape that you see right um, so that's the the basis behind pattern projector is let's make this weird shape that you get from the projector output look like a rectangle okay that makes sense you, so yours is not a program that you download yours is a web-based program so you go to a website and it's there can you explain a little bit about that yeah so it's called the progressive web app um so it means you can download it but in its current state you cannot use it offline it's definitely possible for us to make it usable offline but we just haven't gotten around to that functionality it's kind of been thrown to, on the back burner um, but the way that you download it, I think we're going to add a button. So you just know, you can just click on the button to download it, but in Chrome or in edge, you can see in the, um, in the bar on the top, it'll have a button for installing it. And then you can just use it like a regular app on your computer. Yeah, it, the good thing is that anytime that you, um, refresh or reopen it, it will pull down the latest version. So you don't have to worry about keeping it up to date. So you get, cause we're constantly adding new features and changes. Yeah, I've got it downloaded on my desktop. Um, but the thing is, because it's web-based, is it limited? Like, can you use it on anything that has connection to the internet? 
you can, but it won't work well on certain things. So for example, you can open it up on your phone, but I would definitely not advise using it on your phone because the space is just so small, unless you have I don't know, a humongous phone. Um, it's just too small to get an accurate calibration because the uh, error sort of gets propagated out. So I haven't, I haven't done this while projecting but I have opened it on my iPad and I have a keyboard for my iPad so I can use the arrow buttons and I have kind of messed around with that. And I feel like I might be able to get that precise enough to calibrate that way, especially using the arrows on the keyboard. Um, but I haven't had a chance to, it, it's a pain to turn the projector on that can do the Wi-Fi, So I haven't done that yet. Um, okay. But then you also have the lag whenever you're doing it, um, uh, wirelessly rather than uh, wired, which can make it a little bit harder to get those calibrations exact too. Yeah, it can be pretty frustrating. I have mine set up with the Chromecast right now and yeah. just that little extra bit of lag, but it's such a trade-off, right? Because one way I have a wire sort of just hanging in front of my yeah. face and the other yeah. way I have wirelessly. <laughs> so I guess it depends on which what thing you find more frustrating. Yeah, I, you can't see it right now because it's hidden, but I have um, a mini projector, a short throw projector, and an ultra short projector all set up because I use them for different things on my channel. And I wanted to be able to speak to whoever had whatever kind of projector. Um, but it's just the mini that's that can be done wirelessly. So I don't use it as often because it makes a smaller image. Um, who can use this program? Is this like a, it sounds super, super techy, techy and technical and hard to use, but is it really hard to use or can anybody use it? I think it's extremely easy to use, but I think that the site has a long way to go to making it obvious how to use it that way. Um, okay. Because I don't think that it's very obvious when you go to the calibration page, what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. So that's something we're trying to work on right now is making that much more obvious. Because I think once people get it, it's like, oh, this takes like two minutes to do and it's very, very simple. Um, but that's just not really well documented right now. It literally should just be you spend maybe one minute dragging your your corners to match your grid and then maybe going around and fine tuning it to make sure it's exactly right. And then that's it. You're done. Yeah, it's you're dragging four corners to corners of your mat and entering measurements. And that's yeah, that's it. You told us that you got the idea for the program doing the mu mural behind you, um, but what made you think, oh, I really want to do this with patterns? Because I really wanted to be able to project or so. That's <laughs> basically it. Because it's pretty much the exact same problem. It's just a different space. And I feel like it's more well-defined too. Like there's very specific problems for projector pattern sewing. And whereas murals, it's much more general. Yeah. Um, and if the mural is not exactly precise, it's not as big yeah. of a deal as if your clothes don't fit because the pattern wasn't right. Yeah, um, it's mostly like I, I spend my time like I really enjoy sewing and I'm sort of that's what I spend my time doing so like I should focus on a project that I'm very interested in and that's sort of the main driver for it. It is web-based and it is free and it is open source so anybody can go to the website and and access it that way and then the people who are smart enough to know how to do it can help you work on it. Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so I know that there's at least one person, and I'm sorry, I don't have her name, um, who's been helping you work on it. Will you kind of talk about the collaborative effort that came about with the Projector for Sewing community? Um, I made it open source because I've always, well, most of the projects I've done have been open source. And really when I got into programming, it was because of some open source projects that I had been working on in a professional capacity. Um, and I've really liked the collaboration that I've had in the past on these projects. So I thought, well, I'll make it open source and see if anybody will collaborate. The first day that I launched, I was so nervous because so many people were sending messages and I felt like it was all on me because like I had made it by myself. And then that night, Hannah had sent a pull request, which is like, a whole new bunch of features that she added. And she's like, oh, I don't want to be too pushy, but if you want, I have this amazing contribution to add. And I was so excited. I couldn't sleep that night because I was so happy that she had done that. 
And since then, I cannot believe the amount of help she has, not only her, she has been exceptional in that, in the help that she's given to this project, but so many other people have contributed with just even feedback, um, translations, videos. I cannot believe what a community this is. Like, I'm so happy that I decided to focus on this project because of the response that I've gotten and all the help. It feels like it's a community project already. Yeah. Um, PDF Stitcher, I feel like, was very much like that when Charlotte first launched that. It's also open source and free. And um, that was kind of the first program that was written by a projector sewist for a projector sewist. And it, I I don't think, I think she was kind of like you. She didn't really expect the response that she got. She was writing it for herself to solve her own problem. And then once she launched it and everybody was like, this is amazing. Let us help you. And she was like, oh, wow. <laughs> um, so I, I love that about the community of projector sewists and how we, I mean, honestly, the entire concept has been this very collaborative e effort and everybody, you know, working towards um, how do we actually make this work? And Sasha Sewist is the ringleader in that collaborative effort, but Missy Pores who came up with the idea. And then there's all of you people who are writing these programs for us. And it's just, it's amazing. I love this community and how, you know, we had a problem and we came together and we solved it in so many different ways. And, and now it's being shared with everybody else. Okay, so um, what are your hopes for this software for, for Pattern Projector? Um, I have so many, I have too many ideas, I feel <laughs> like. Um, and I keep, I'll, I'll, I'll work on something or I'll put in, I don't know if you've ever visited the GitHub page for the site. Um, so that's Not for Pattern Projector. I've seen it for... Um, PDF Stitcher because once upon a time that was the only way to download it, but oh, okay. I haven't been to, to yours. I, it's a little intimidating for somebody who doesn't <laughs> know what it is. Yes, yes, I I, I know it's a it, it feels like it's very technical. Yes, but um, in there we report all the issues and then discuss issues and new ideas and features that we think we might want to add. And it's just turned into such a list of like, oh, we could do this. Oh, we could do that. Um, so even last night, I got so excited with the idea of adding stitching into it too. Mm -hmm. Because one thing, like I love PDF Stitcher and I've used it so much, but one thing is I would love to have it be visual as you're doing it. So you could see it being stitched wow. together as you're putting in the parameters, like you're setting the number of columns and you could see them move around. So and I made up- You would know little, if it was correct before you generated it. Before you okayed it. Yeah. Um, so I made up a little prototype for doing that last. I stayed up way too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I sent it out this morning <laughs> and then Hannah was like, oh my goodness, I'm so excited about that. And Roel too is like, oh, we could add this and that. Yeah, that's an amazing idea. Um, or even, I mean, sti the stitching part, yes, but also the like line thickening and color changing of the lines and stuff would be awesome too, to just do all at once. Yeah. Yeah. That's you already, been. you already have layers in there where you can choose layers just like on Adobe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that kind of answered the next question too, that, you know, what are your plans for the future? You've talked about, you know, the features that you want to add. Um, do you have other projects in the future? Anything you, or are you really focused on this one project? I'm, I'm definitely really focused on this project, but I'm also at some point in the next few weeks, I do have to pivot back to trying to find a job too. So there's going to be a balance between the two. <laughs> Hopefully this can try and help me find one. Uh, but I'm definitely still invested in spending my time, my spare time working on it. Unfortunately, the real world always always comes for us, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add specifically about the program? I am, by the way, probably next week, I am going to record a video showing how to use it. And, and that will come out approximately a week after this interview does. That is all very much pending on my real life things that <laughs> take my time too. But um, so yeah, is there anything you want to add about the program or anything you find particularly exciting or cool that got figured out or something like that? Um, I can't think of anything else really that I want to add other than like, please keep the feedback coming because people, all the feedback that people have given or the ideas people have given 
have been amazing. And I feel like this community knows so much more than I know, or that even the other people working on the site know. Um, so any ideas that people have, I would love to hear it. Or if you want to plus one on one of the things that we have in the works and say, oh, I would really love this thing, then I sort of know what to prioritize. Of course, I go off on my, well, I'm excited about this. So I'll leave those other things. But uh, if you have any ideas, please, please let me know. So what's the best way for people to contact you with an idea? Um, so there's lots of methods, but there's my email that's on the site um, in the bottom. There's also just on Facebook, I feel like is the way that most people have been sending messages. Um, and of course on GitHub, but I know that can be a bit intimidating for people to go in there and make an issue. Yeah, so in the Facebook group, in the Projectors for Sewing group, people are kind of commenting on your your post. Is that what you meant by Facebook? Exactly, yes. And also um, some people have direct messaged me on there with ideas. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so let, um, I'm, I'm gonna, ask you to type these for me and I'll copy and paste them directly in the description box. But um, can you kind of out loud say where, so what is it? Patternprojector.com is the website. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, and then any, any links to like the GitHub or anything like that, you can send me um, like message it to me or whatever, and I will copy and paste it directly. So I don't mess that up. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, in the description box. This program is such an exciting move forward and you can go try it right now it's already out there for people to try um, but as Courtney said she's constantly working on new improvements on it um, you can calibrate and then upload your pdf directly on it and it's got um, so many options already for how to kind of manipulate that pattern once it's on there and like I said I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video for y'all to show you how to use it um it is such an exciting time to be in projector sewing with all of these amazing advancements that are being made. And I am so excited about all the software that is by projector sewers for projector sewers. Courtney, thank you so much for coming and explaining this to us. Um, I, all of the software is just so exciting. Um, and I, I can't wait to see what the community is going to do and contribute to this project because like you said, um, the community of projector so it's, it's so awesome and we just um we're all a little opinionated <laughs> and we know what we want <laughs> um but that makes it easy to hopefully easy to say okay like this is what i can add that will really improve this um, program so i'm really excited about that thank you Courtney. thank you thank you so much for having me thank you for watching my videos like subscribe and comment